Trainer difficulty. One of the most misunderstood settings in Zwift. In short, having the setting at max level makes your ride feel more like riding outdoors. This is because the trainer resistance will change to match changes in road gradient. At 100%, as the gradient kicks, you'll need to downshift gears in order to keep turning those pedals over. At 0%, the resistance will remain the same, and keeping a constant cadence at a given power level is easier. If 0% trainer resistance were applied in real life, it would effectively be removing the resistance from gravity. But can trainer difficulty choice make Zwift racing easier? Just take a look online and you will find debates with some claiming riding below 100% is cheating and provides an unfair advantage. However, prominent Zwift YouTubers have videos testing rides at the same wattage and different trainer difficulties. In this GP Llama video, he held watts as close to 350 as possible to test if segment times were similar. The conclusion was that a watt is a watt no matter what, the trainer difficulty, and segment speeds are equal. And my own test backed this up. So if the same wattage is required no matter what, I'm done with this video, right? It can be nice and short? Well, no, that's not the complete story. It's great to know that trainer difficulty doesn't impact speed at a given wattage, but we all know races aren't static. They are filled with tactics, big attacks, and periods where the pace picks up or slows. Dealing with these dynamic scenarios, in addition to having trainer resistance changing, can cause inefficiencies and a harder perceived effort. Your perceived effort could be greater at 100% by having to constantly change cadence with fluctuations in gradient. Maybe there is a kick from 3 to 8%, and you must decide between using more torque in the same gear or downshifting and keeping the same cadence to keep your power. These frequent changes can result in a greater variance in power output. You may lose some power while initially shifting gears and then have to increase it to sm close small gaps. Essentially, your power and cadence chart will have more spikes. Further, riding at different cadences results in utilizing different systems or muscles at a given wattage. For example, the equation for power is cadence times torque. If your cadence drops, you will need to apply more torque to main contact with the bunch. As it's easier to ride at a constant pace, the rider with 100% setting may have a slightly higher normalized power at the end of the day. Additionally, you may have increased chances for having a mechanical, as shifting gears while the chain is under load can result in the chain popping off. Overall, these differences could be evidence for why it is considered cheating to ride at less than 100%. So I set out to test the differences in trainer difficulty in some race-like scenarios. The first scenario everyone imagines is climbing. I tested on a short punchy climb in Libby Hill and also on the first three hairpins of ADZ. To simulate a race scenario, I completed two types of rides. First, I held a steady wattage and then had a sudden increase, simulating a rider attacking. On ADZ, I covered an attack on all three hurricanes. Second, I went all out on Libby Hill, simulating a race in which segment points were available. Unsurprisingly, on all the tests, there were noticeable differences in perceived effort. The obvious one was that at 100%, I had to remain constantly focused, forced to slow my cadence and increase torque when the road kicked. We can see in the two charts that the 100% trainer difficulty has more spikes for both power and cadence. Not only was it visible in the chart, but I also felt my power had large swings and it was difficult to ride at a constant pace as the road constantly undulated. In addition, when there were sudden, steep increases in gradient, I was forced to quickly shift gears or risk being stuck, not being able to turn over the pedals. You can almost tell just by looking at the chart where this happened. It is marked by a V-shaped pattern with power and cadence dropping suddenly as I shifted to an easier gear. And finally, the most noticeable difference was when the climb leveled out. Especially at each of the ADZ hairpins, it felt almost effortless to keep power going at the 0% trainer difficulty. However, at 100%, I was forced to increase my cadence to keep a reasonable amount of power on each bend. This was relatively easy to do in my tests, but first-hand experience has taught me when you are fatigued, it is difficult to keep the power up through these bends. One related loss in efficiency 
was that only at 100% was I forced to ride in my small ring. And this made it difficult to keep the power up as the road flattened. This 100% setting forces you to choose between shifting rings or just spinning faster. This not only causes efficiency loss on ADZ, but on other routes such as Bologna or Achiron, where the road fluctuates between super steep followed by a few flat sections. Although there were some differences in perceived efforts, my climbing efforts resulted in similar times for similar amounts of average watts. Sprinting was the most straightforward of the tests completed. I chose one of the flattest sprints in the game, and unsurprisingly, I felt almost no difference in perceived effort. As the road had very little changes in gradient, we would expect the resistance applied to the trainer to be similar with any setting. Remember the trainer difficulty setting essentially could be labeled realism. Since the gradient didn't change, the realism in this scenario would be similar with any setting. However, I could foresee certain sprints where a lower trainer difficulty could have some advantages. The Macquarie 40 route comes to mind. In this sprint, riders must deal with undulating road in the last 500 meters before a steep kick as you cross the finish man. The advantage would be that it is easier to hold the same wattage without changing gears. In an old GCN video, one of my favorite sprinters of all time, Mark Cavendish, explains why changing gears during a sprint is a poor choice. The video is linked below, but essentially you are losing force and torque through the pedals, meaning your overall speed will be lower. An often forgotten part of the trainer difficulty debate is the downhill. Have you ever heard riders complain they were with the lead group of two or three over a KOM and just couldn't hang on in the downhill? This is often attributed to being a lower weight, but it could also partially be due to trainer difficulty. If you are going fast enough, much like in real life, you may find you don't have a big enough gear to continue pedaling on the downhill. If another rider has a lower TD, their trainer may have the resistance to allow them to keep pushing the pace and create a gap. Although in my test, I was able to reliably push over 500 watts traveling at high speeds, I've come victim to being dropped in races. This little thought about scenario could have a large impact on race outcome dependent on your TD setting. So my tests show some clear efficiencies gained by riding below 100%. But does that mean everyone riding below is cheating? Let me know your opinion on this divisive topic. But I believe the vast majority of riders below 100% are not cheating. Although they may unknowingly receive an ever so slight advantage, there are plenty of good reasons to change this setting other than trying to gain an unfair advantage. First, if a rider is recovering from or worried about an injury, a lower trainer difficulty may be advised. It will allow you to ride at a smoother cadence and avoid grinding out each pedal stroke, requiring massive amounts of torque. Since higher torque can increase strain on your knees, this setting can reduce risk of injury. Second, many riders have an outdoor bike and an indoor bike. The indoor bike is often cheaper and may have less optimal gearing options. Instead of spending hundreds of dollars on new parts, adjusting the setting is a simple, cheap way to fix the problem. Finally, Different trainers are capable of simulating different gradients, and this is partially why Zwift's default setting is 50%. Just because you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on top-line trainers capable of simulating up to 20% gradients doesn't mean you're cheating. Many riders have trainers only capable of simulating 6% gradients, but still want to have the resistance change constantly. Setting the TD to 50% will then allow the resistance to change constantly on most swift courses. Although I don't believe it's cheating, I believe as you advance through the cats, you should be more encouraged to race at 100%. Specifically, top end racers, such as those who can compete in the Zwift Grand Prix or similar races. Although most races are not for money, the recent Zwift games had monetary rewards and they have increased visibility. Additionally, if strong enough, these riders can compete in the Zwift Racing Academy with an opportunity to earn a pro contract. In these races, it makes sense for there to be a standardized setting. Taking away differences in cadence, torque, and the risk of mechanicals just because the setting is different. I would hate to see a rider lose an opportunity simply because of the TD setting. 
and in a sport commonly decided by fractions of a second, every bit of efficiency matters. But you may ask, will Zwift ever require you to ride at 100% in the future? For most, the answer is simply no. As Zwift knows riders are racing for different reasons and have different equipment, it's not in their economic interest to force all categories to 100%. However, at the top end, there may be an increased enforcement of this going forward. In fact, Zwift already does this for ZGP and Elite races. And they extended it to the A1 community ZRL races in round 3 of this past season. Just take a look at some posts, as riders were unaware this was preset and thought it was a bug in the game. In the coming seasons, I could foresee WTRL implementing it for all Cat A ZRL races, but not much beyond that. Finally. I could foresee this as being an option when individuals set up races. It could simply be an option similar to allowing power-ups or not, but overall I don't see mass adoption of it. Let me know your thoughts below and thank you for joining.